Chapter 5 of the Algebra 2 book deals on types of variation problems. So we will address a few of these here today. Um, one of the key ingredients for variations is looking for keywords even with our different types of variations. So a key phrase for direct variation that you will look for in the problem is, I'm using X and Y. It can be any variables, so keep that in mind, but something varies directly as something else. So, for instance, Y varies directly as X. That's a key phrase I'm going to look for in a problem. All right? If I see that, I know I'm dealing with direct variation. Now, where does direct variation come from? Well, the general formula looks like this. Where do people say then you got to go through and find the constant of variation? And do all of your work. What I'm going to do with all these variations is show you a proportion. If I can remember the proportion and set up, we're in business. Now, this one should look somewhat familiar to you. Since y equals mx plus b is linear, this also is going to be linear. Every direct variation problem will have a y-intercept of 0. So it's crossing through the origin in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So, the long and short of it. Some people will try to say, well, I have to find the constant of variation. So I'll have one set of information, y sub 1 equals the constant of variation here. And then in the problem, you'll get a second set of information. y sub 2 equals k times x sub 2. So two different pieces of information than these two, but our constant of variation is going to be the same. So if I solve for x k here, I have to. So I get k equals y sub 1 over x sub 1. And if we solve for k here, y sub 2 over x sub 2. Point being is this. K is the same in both of these. So if I'm going to do a direct variation, instead of solving for K and doing all these other steps, I'm going to remember that this is equal to K. This is equal to K. So if I can remember that proportion, I set the problems up and I'm in business. Let's take an example and work with it. So in our example, we have this. I recommend, once again, that we go through and write down everything we need to do, but I also like to label my problems. So as I look here, I see key phrase varies directly. Okay. So x varies directly as y, and y equals negative 15 when x is 5. Find y when x is equal to 3. Might be something that you can easily do in your head. Good. I want to set them up for those events where you can't do it so easily in your head. So as I go through this problem, how do I know where x1 and y1 is? Rule of thumb. What's the first piece of information you get? you're given? What's the second piece? So here's... The key phrase, so tell me what type of problem I'm in. Here then is my first piece of information, so I'm going to call this y sub 1. My first piece of information with x, I'm going to call it x sub 1. And then I'll call this y sub 2 and x sub 2. So if I remember this, I get these things labeled, there's my setup. So I'm going to put a negative 15 over 5. Yeah, you can reduce if you'd like. And I'm going to put a y over 3. And then I'm going to solve. 
45y equals negative 45. Based on this direct variation, y is going to equal a negative 9. So then we move on to our next type of variation. Direct variation. One's going up, the other one's going up. They, they vary directly with each other. Next one's called inverse variation. Okay. So with inverse variation, as one quantity increases, let's get this down. There we go. As one quantity increases, the other is decreasing or one quantity increases as the other decreases quantity that is one quantity increases as the other one decreases so varies inversely is your key phrase. Again, variables will be what have you. So here's our general formula. Y equals K over X. Not going to be linear as we can see. Or x, y is equal to k. Again, not linear. Well, look at what we got over here. As we do this, you know, you can set up your y sub 2 equals k over x sub 2 as well when we're doing these things. So as we set these up, our um, formula that we're going to come into is going to look like this. x sub 1 over y sub 2 is going to equal x sub 2 over y sub 1. And again, how was that derived? Well, if we go back to all this stuff here, you know, this would have been y sub 2 x sub 2 equal to k, and then your x, y equals, and that is simply divided by y sub 1. So in other words, having the x's on top to make a proportion out of them. So this is the proportion I want to remember for inverse. formula sheet, jot it down, you know, go with what I have. So let's look at an example of this. And again, key ingredient I want to try to hammer home here is let's label things so we know what we're dealing with. <coughs> Excuse me. So as we run through this problem, if R varies inversely as T, okay, didn't give you X and Y's this year, and r equals negative 6 when t equals 2, find r when t equals negative 7. Okay, no big deal, other than we got to go through and label a few things, so let's do so. So, if r varies, and again, a lot of these things are set up y, so we're going to call this y. We'll call this x. And then that's the case, then this will be our y sub 1. This will be our x sub 1. This will then be y sub 2. And this will be x sub 2. So you're asking the question, why did I call this y? Why did I call this t? Because typically in these, it's always y first. Hold on before you lose your mind or anything. We'll go back and rearrange it and see, see what happens as we do it. Let's go this way first. So as we're setting this up, 
I look at my information here. I want x sub 1 over y sub 2. So what's our x sub 1? What's our sub 2? Okay, hard for us to uh, answer all these questions. So x sub 1 would be right here, 2 over y sub 2, which is r, equal to, we need x sub 2, which is negative 7, over r, I'm sorry, r, which is y sub 1, negative 6. So you can do a couple things here. You can see double negative is going to be a positive, so you can do that. And as we look at this problem, we're going to see 7r equal to 12. Again, I canceled the negatives out within the fraction here. If you have negative 7 raised to negative 12, big deal. r is going to equal 12 sevenths. r will equal 12 sevenths. So again, question in your mind is why did I do that? Well, let's see if you went x here and y here. Just, you know, see what happens. So that means everywhere I see an r, so that would be my x sub 1. This would be my x sub 2. Everywhere I see a t, that's the first one that happens. So that would be my y sub 1. And that would be my y sub 2. Let's just see what would happen. So I need x sub 1 over y sub 2. All right, so I'm in green. x sub 1, negative 6 over y sub 2, negative 7 equal to x sub 2, so I look, there's r, over y sub 1, which is that 2. And lo and behold, look at your cross products. You're going to get the same answer. Key ingredient here is, whatever, if you're not getting x and y's, whatever your setup is, just be consistent with it. Just be consistent. Our third variation will be called combined um, variation. So when we combine variation, it kind of gives it away what it's saying. You're going to combine a couple things here. So we're going to look for one quantity. So something varies directly. and or inversely, usually and, with two or more quantities. So you get one thing that varies directly and inversely with two more things, or inversely with two more things. So, like the key phrase, y varies directly as x. Maybe it's a few things in there, and then we'll see why it varies inversely is z. So we'll see those things coming into play. I'm going to cut to the chase in terms of setting up. I'm just going to go right to our proportion on this, and it's going to look like this. We'll have y sub 1 times z sub 1. So the first y and the first z multiply together all over x sub 1. Equal to y sub 2, z sub 2, all over x sub 2. 
so we got our proportion here so let's look through and an example and see what we can do with this so as we're looking here we want to go through and make sure we're um, doing everything that we need to in terms of labeling so look what we got here we got something varies directly all right so maybe direct variation but then we see and also varies inversely all in the same one so I know it's going to be combined we're combining two types of variations so as we look at this let's see what we have I'm going to call this Y so everything again just to have it starting off with I'm going to call everything R X and then anything else a new variable we'll call Z so let's look what we got so as we're looking through here notice in the other problems we had find in your last sentence now find comes up here and then if all this stuff so they've rearranged the order on you find is your second set of information so to speak if you want to look at it that way so i'm going to go over here with the if so if i got all this information find all this other stuff so excuse me here's how i'm going to go through it i see t so I'm going to call that Z sub 1. I see the letter P, and I've said I'm going to call those Y sub 1s. I'm going to call that X sub 1. Okay. So then this is going to be Z sub 2. This will be my X sub 2. Careful, they switch the order on us. And then this will be our Y sub 2. So if I follow this setup, when I do this problem, I'm going to see y sub 1, which was right here, 4, and z sub 1, so I'm going to see 4 times 20 all over x sub 1 divided by 2, equal to, and then y sub 2, negative 5, z sub 2, so negative 5, t, all over, So what do we see in all this stuff? So we look over here. 80 over 2 equals negative 5t over 2. So you get your choices. You can reduce the fractions. You can st stick with bigger numbers. You know, that's completely up to you. If I divide all this out, I could have 40 over 1 equal to negative t over 2. And that's going to give us negative t equals 80. So t is equal to negative 80. All right, now this leads us to our last type of variation. And that's called joint variation. We're going to get a quantity. So you have one quantity varies directly. as a product of two or more quantities. Varies directly as the product of two or more. So phrase y varies jointly sorry I almost did as x and y or sorry as x and z there we go I got it out I said it the right way varies as x and z very good okay so again i like the proportion setup so as we get our proportions going we will have y sub 1 over the product of x 
1 and z sub 1 equal to y sub 2 over the product sorry with the z this will be our joint variation some people might also even have <coughs> You know, the setup you could do this one and just have y1 x2 z2 equal to y2 x1 z1. In other words, the cross products of your proportion. All right, let's take this to an example. So we have this. Suppose y varies jointly as x and z. Find y when x equals 10, z equals 5. If y equals 12, when z equals 8. So kind of same deal. I'm going to go through here. Actually, I see the word f, so I'm going to call these my first, and then those the second ones where I got find. So that'll be my y sub 1 x sub 1, z sub 1, and then y sub 2, x sub 2, z sub 2. So i got to be careful now when I do the setup. Well, y sub 1, so I'm going to have my 12 over, but now as we set this up, I need x1 and z1, so there they are, 3 and 8. equal to y sub 2, which is what we're trying to find, so I'll just call it y, over the product of this x and z, so 5 times 10. So it's going to give us 12 over 24, y over 50. Some of you will reduce this thing, so reduce down, 1 half. Y over 50, I'm sure a lot of you can do this in your head, but 2y equals 50, so y is equal to 25. So there's our four types of variation. Use these notes, come back to them. I would make a little flashcard if I used to, at least till you get down with all the different proportions, so you know when you're used to them.